The story continues from the last installment, with the protagonist using the elevator with Sheriff Toads there and Stinger Flynn, running away from the Jess there, and now the hostile queen, Bouncelia. Now with the scepter at risk, the creatures known as the Naughty Ones that escaped from Queen Bouncelia's pouch pose great danger to anyone they encounter, with only the scepter being a tool to put them back. Toadster then asks the parent to follow him so they can get to the scepter where they reach a place that Toadster was thrown in by the people who worked in the kindergarten, a place they threw all the undesirables or experiments that they didn't see worthy or ready for display, essentially experiments who were not obedient enough. However, Queen Bouncelia took Toads there under her wings and protected him, alongside many others, hence why they gave her the title, the Queen, as she created a kingdom out of a dark dumping ground where they threw all the unwanted experiments. A note displays the tragedy of Sheriff Toads there, who believed the people in the organization were deliverer of justice themselves, but instead, he faced the cruel reality of of how he was tricked and thrown into the dumping ground without any good reason, just because they deemed him unworthy. After completing a platforming sector, the parent collects some items which leads to her death by a floating ghostly entity. However, she is reincarnated soon after with the item disappearing and being replaced by a book, giving the parent a strange feeling that she cannot explain. It's unclear at this point if the death is canon or if it is just a gameplay gimmick, but if it is canon, it means that the parent might be affected by the Javanium as well, which gives all the mascots reincarnating abilities. Bambalina soon joins the duo as well and explains that she has a bunch of students to take care of, seemingly being friendly now, with the protagonist getting instructed to get to the introduction sector to get a switch to access a room where the scepter is. The protagonist soon finds another note by a child who is potentially the child of the protagonist, explaining that they were instructed not to talk to the face or otherwise known as Zolfius, as Miss Mason asked, and of course, Bambalina being Miss Mason. This in a way explains Zolfius might be a hostile character, unlike Sheriff Toads there and many other mascots. As the protagonist takes the rest of the way alone while Toads there explains they have to get Stringer Flynn and attend to his injuries, the protagonist encounters Better Giggle who claims that he is sorry for what he did, releasing all the naughty ones by making Queen Bouncelia laugh, being remorseful and wanting to help now. So it's a little confusing with the mascots at this point as they can all turn against you and then be friendly and then again turn against you. And of course, the protagonist will trust them every single time that they claim they have now switched sides and ready to be friendly. A further note about Case 14, Queen Bouncelia details that she was created through using a human subject with a kangaroo and javanium, but the human subject's identity is not disclosed as to not repeat the same mistakes as before for the subject to feel resentful against the people who experimented on her. The note describes that the scepter was not created by them and they have not physically seen it, something Queen Bouncelia describes as her magic wand something that has magical powers. Eventually, the organization notices Queen Bouncelia has a tendency of lying, saying that she doesn't remember where she got the stick from, which makes them realize that she has developed a stance in refusing to cooperate with them, something that they didn't notice before. Based on this observation, they also throw the queen to the dumping place, not recognizing her to be ready for presentation. Ever. Meanwhile, reaching a presentation room, they quickly hide in a secured room with the doors locked when a monstrous entity tries to break through the door claiming to be Ban Ban. But as soon as the lights turn back on, the entity leaves with Better Giggle explaining it could have been one of the naughty ones who are comfortable in the dark only and despise the light, hence why they are only encountered in the darkness. Maybe that explains why they stayed in the queen's pouch as it is pretty dark in there. As Better Giggle and the parents survive the encounter with this entity, they head back with Better Giggle hoping that his jokes could potentially ease down the tension, with the sheriff possibly forgiving him. Just when they get back to the safe house, Sheriff Toads there unloads his mind against both the protagonist and the jester, on how she betrayed him, working with Better Giggle, explaining he never trusted her, but listened to Queen Bouncelia as he greatly respected her. Just when ranting on and on about how 
how much she distrusts the protagonist and wants to get rid of her. A worm-like creature comes out of nowhere and attacks Bambolina and drags her away very quickly, with Sheriff running after her to save her. Going deeper into the floor, the protagonist finds earlier versions of Bitter Giggle of what deformed monstrosities they are, having two different personas, tormented and incomplete, suffering in their own body. This shows the extent of the scientist's cruelty creating these poor creatures. One version of Better Giggle displays how the persona split up as they couldn't get along with each other. Another shows how he is broken, losing a limb. Subsequently, the protagonist meets Ban Ban, who is also on the same team now, wanting to help in order to get the naughty ones back to the pouch. I've seen cases escape containment before, but nothing this crazy. You're not much of a talker, so I'm going to assume you're here for an important reason. After solving a puzzle, a large monstrous entity appears, attacking Ban Ban, being about to kill him, when just then, Better Giggle comes to his rescue and saves him while getting injured himself. This entity explains he wants to cause as much damage as possible as he alongside other sea humans as their captors. As the protagonist carries on going forward, Better Giggle, despite being thrown like a rag doll, catches up with the protagonist as if he didn't even get a scratch. He explains the entity they encountered is someone called Sir Dadaloo, another scrapped mascot who has been long forgotten. As they proceed, the protagonist finds another note about another experiment known as Case Number 4, with the alias Surgeon being just a human who was experimented on with the green substances known as Germanium, who has many arms which they could use for many different tasks. Managing to go back to the safe house, Ban Ban seems to be fully back up as if he wasn't smashed just a little earlier, explaining he trapped Nap Nap in a cage as he was acting up. Otherwise, he expresses his happiness that all the mascots are back together in the same team, just like before. Talking to Stinger Flynn, he explains how the protagonist caused all of this, putting all the blame on her, as Stinger Flynn had a plan and if the parent didn't intervene, it would have put a stop to all of this and got them closer to the children. That's when Stinger Flynn gives the protagonist another vision about the past. The dream almost makes zero sense, with all the mascots waiting for a bus to carry on their journey to get to the beach. Waiting for the right bus, the wrong bus arrives, which kidnaps Captain Fiddles and Nab Nab gets dragged by something, which puts the mascots up for another mission to rescue them. Just then, another bus comes out of nowhere and drives into them, which brings the vision to an end. Not making much sense, but according to the tragic background music and the sad tone of the mascots, it seems like it was a sad vision. Waking back up from the dream, enjoying some more terrible puns from Better Giggle, the parent goes on to turn the final switch to open the room where the scepter is. Finding a note on her way about case 4, the surgeon again. It explains how the subject was created in order to perform more dangerous and harder tasks used as a tool whom the organization didn't care much for, hence explaining the multiple arms that it has. Subsequently, entering what seems like a surgery room, the parent finds two small creatures who beg her for help to find their parent, who could potentially be the surgeon, someone who potentially experimented on them with them thinking it's their parent. Poor little things have been deprived of a normal life, only trusting and showing affection to something they had contact with, someone they looked up to. So hopefully, the surgeon is better than humans who performed the cruel experiments. Finding yet another note, it describes how it is the Javanium that has regeneration properties, hence explaining how all the mascots revive and come back to life after sustaining major injuries. But it seems as if they still feel pain and have to go through it over and over again. The note further describes how an imminent rebellion is predicted from the mascots, hence the organization prepares for some sort of resistance. After some time, with the help of Ban Ban, the parent faces off the deformed and upgraded version of Little Beak, who transformed into a mindless, angry monster being dunked in a Javanium vat. Defeating the monstrous form of Little Beak transforms it into its original cute shape being unharmed. 
Finally, meeting in the base with Ban Ban and Better Giggle. Ban Ban frees Nap Nap and they all decide to go to the room after managing to turn all the switches where they open a chest which contains the scepter. However, it turns out the scepter is missing a piece hence they cannot use it to put all the naughty ones away. That's when Sir Dadaloo comes to the mix wanting to take the scepter for himself so he can escape when Ban Ban has no other choice but to transform Nap Nap into a large more hostile form in order to stop Dadaloo, which he easily manages to do as he turns into a horrific large monster. The group then runs away for some reason instead of taking the scepter. But midway, Better Giggle separates from the group, deciding to stay as he explains the naughty ones laugh at his jokes and that he finally has an audience. So this leaves Ban Ban and the parent to run away using an elevator to go even further down in order to find the surgeon. Just when reaching the elevator, Sir Dadaloo alongside many other mascots whom he has put under his spell, seemingly using some sort of magic, maybe from the scepter, he wants to stop them. But Ban Ban sacrifices himself, telling the parent to find the surgeon, holding off all the other manipulated mascots, instructing the parent to go to another fetch quest, this time finding yet another mascot called Surgeon to probably solve another puzzle. Well, this brings us to the end of chapter 6. At this point, anything could be possible in this game with mascots turning against you and turning on your side. So maybe Dadaloo will turn on our side in the next chapter. So expect the unexpected. It's been your host star and I will see you on the next one. Have a fantastic day.